Super glad to be here today. I'm Daniele Fabris. I'm a sound designer from Italy. And today I would like to do, introduce you to this uh, package uh, at the release and, uh, and you can find it on the Packet Manager of Max. It's a um, collection of tools coded in Gen that is um, useful to generate uh, coordinates, XY coordinates in uh, audio signal to let's say control uh, your patch. And um, in this short presentation, I would like to give you a super briefly overview of the package and uh, maybe focus a bit on uh, some use cases uh, of this patch. So let me share my screen. I'm gonna guide you. All right. Okay, so. Here we are. If you're a Max user, of course, you can download uh, for free the package. You just need to go to the show packet manager. And uh, yeah, in the second page, scroll down and go to the second page. And the bottom, you find the exception X, Y coordinates pack. You just need to download it. Uh, I've already downloaded, so I need just to launch it. And after download, you can also find it directly in your extra files and here we have the overview of the package. Basically the package is composed by snippet code clippings, apps and uh, some uh, useful examples. Uh, yeah, here it is. Basically it's a collection yeah, of several modules, let's call it, and each module implements different techniques to generate X and Y coordinates and uh, all the modules send out uh, basically yeah two output uh, to audio signal normalized between zero and one and um, some of them you can see here in the bottom there are some um, um, attractors implemented just them they have also the z coordinates available but let's take a look quickly here yeah this is the the clippings uh, here you have some manual sequence techniques, some FM this is a little module implementing the FM principle to generate these coordinates. And yeah, basically we have also some, some of them. Basically every, every module is also optimized to be used in, um, in the multi-channel, uh, um, multi-channel option like the, the multi here is optimized for multi-channel control, so generating uh, as much voice you need, but uh, the same uh, for the manual, the random, uh, everyone can uh, basically be using a multi-channel uh, uh, mode. Uh, here, I, I, in, the, in the package, you can find some clippings already uh, with some uh, graphic user interface uh, uh, ready, but uh, if you want to just add them to your code and customize a bit to them, you find them in the code folder, uh, you have the access to basically the, the raw code and you can uh, customize it and add to your patch. But I don't, don't want to focus too much in the in uh, each module, so I prefer to show we show you some uh, directly some implementation, some example, and I would like to start from this example here that represents uh, the um, the reason why I start to develop this package because uh, in the recent uh, years I'm working uh, and researching uh, developing an instrument. Uh, and, and music uh, related to the spatial audio field. And uh, I needed some tools to generate uh, yeah, signal, control signal and uh, coordinates to uh, move my sound in, inside a multi-channel environment <clears throat> and uh, yeah, create movement uh, trajectories and location. And I was implementing my spatial um, environment, uh, multi-channel special environment in Gen. So I, I, I wanted to create also some tools uh, and that uh, help me to yeah, control the movement of my sound. Uh, and that's the, 
we can see the first implementation of the of this package. Uh, so it's basically moving my sound inside this uh, quadraphonic uh, uh, system. We have some sound. Of course, we have a stereo. We have a stereo decoding, so it's not a really an immersive experience right now. But you can have an idea of it. And uh, yeah. Yeah, we have a bunch of uh, example using uh, different modules, the random, the mass, the wave, and we have a bit of clue of what's going on here. Uh, but uh, after this implementation, I also realized that, uh, that these modules can, could also be useful also for other purposes. So uh, uh, in the package, uh, uh, we had uh, also some other example like in to show how these modules can be used also in audio modulation parameters control. So for example, here we have a, a granular, the granular, uh, this granular um, module here that is implementing an absolute random auto retributive granular synthesis algorithm. And uh, here is, in, is uh, implemented uh, as a controller for a granulator, let's say, do a sampler. So it's also enable a, an interesting way to, a creative way to control your instrument. And let's uh, listen a bit. Here, basically the X and Y coordinates are controlling the the read point and the speed of the of the uh, player inside the jump pad. And uh, this sound is uh, the famous uh, that everyone knows, the uh, jungle, the drum of Max. So another super. Simple example on the um, audio modulation side, uh, and we have also the wavetable. Here we can see how these uh, tools are used to um, modulate the morphing between uh, a wavetable uh, synthesizer. For example, yeah, we have also, yeah, we have a simple implementation. And here we have also the MC implementation multi -chain. So we are we are controlling uh, yeah three six uh, wave table at the same time. Pretty funny, uh, but uh, after that, uh, there is also some example uh, that show how this um, this package can also be used uh, uh, to control uh, in the jitter environment. And thanks to Franco Conte that help help uh, help me here yeah, to to realize this uh, example. He implemented this example using uh, the X Y coordinates pack to control uh, this. Uh, beautiful patching jitter. So yeah, here we are also another use case of the package. And double click here, we have the other module. And yeah, it's controlling uh, all the, co uh, each coordinates is controlling the position of, the, uh, of uh, each shape here. So, yeah, it's cool. But uh, for someone that want also to use it, uh, not in audio rate, let's call it an audio signal. It's super simple. We can you can also just quantize it and uh, use it uh, as uh, to send like in uh, or see message or whatever you want. After that, I would like just uh, if I have a few more minutes to so show it. Some more complex implementation and music in the recent uh, period. I'm 
I want to show you two instruments that are developing and still in work in progress, but are pretty interesting and show how I'm using these tools inside a more complex environment. Like this is a special instrument, I call it. I'm developing this instrument to work in a multi-channel environment. And here to control each grains of this granular sam sampler, yeah, I'm using a, a combination of two modules of the XY package. And uh, yeah. Let's see, let me just upload a file super quick. And yeah, here there is a correlation between the, um, I'm using a kind of a mix of the grain module and the multi-module of the X and Y in package to, but in correlation with the size of my granular of, of, the, of the grains length. So here we can see, of course, Let's turn down the volume. Uh, of course, now we don't have an immersive uh, experience. I, I'm decoding everything in studio, so, but you can have an idea of, uh, to think about the, this square, like a um, like multi-channel uh, environment. That's another example, um, but the final example I want to show you is a more crazy one. Is uh, this uh, how I'm using the um, the modules to control uh, some parameters of this uh, instrument, this sound effect actually. So here I can place, uh, you know, decide the parameter manually. But if I want to have a more uh, organic interaction with the instrument. Uh, and more interaction at the same time. I'm using. Uh, I can turn on the modulation here, here, and also here if I want. And uh, just switching between this button, I'm switching between the modules. Here we have. I'm using a random uh, module. Here uh, a wave module, and here is uh, the mass uh, mass uh, module. And the same here. And uh, yeah, what you have is a pretty crazy machine that is kind of alive and can play by itself. Let's listen a bit to what's going on here. Yeah. Here it is. Uh, I just want to add that uh, here, I don't have an example, but this package is, uh, could also be useful for the error rack uh, uh, user because uh, the output of each module is normalized, is an audio signal normalized between zero and one and can be used uh, easily as a CD signal. So I have already had some feedback from some guys that sent me a video while it was using uh, these modules to control uh, uh, is um, his instrument a rock system? So yeah, pretty powerful in my opinion. For and uh, can uh, enable a lot of creative uh, interaction with your instrument in your patch. I'm done with this presentation. Hope uh, it wasn't too long. And thank you for listening Daniel, thank you that is amazing um yeah really 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 well presented and really well packaged so 
Fantastic. Definitely be diving into the packet manager for that one. You mentioned you were working on something you were going to use live. Have you got any performances coming up where you're intending to use your, your project? Yeah, not really in the coming uh, period, but uh, yeah, I'm working also with a saxophone player, Laura Newsday. And uh, recently I was in the uh, Netherlands, uh, the Gaudeamus Festival, playing in the Pentacle system. It's a multi channel uh, system. Uh, uh, developed by Fede Tamberg, and uh, we, I was using this package to control actually all the sound process uh, of the sax sound process in real time, and I was moving uh, this sound uh, uh, through this multi-channel system uh, thanks to these modules. Yeah, and fa fa let me just uh, add. Uh, I want to also thank you really much. The the guy of Music Informatics Collective that helped me a lot to the, like, let's say, package this, uh, this collection, uh, also from the design and graphic uh, point of view. And uh, yeah, thank you, Dan. So I'd like to move on to our second presenter, Roman, which you might know as he's super active on the cycling forums, AKA 110. So we're gonna have a look at some ideas about why modular is superior. So, Roman, I hope you're super ready and we'll be able to see some of your awesome patches. Are you there, sir? Oh, yeah, well, there we are. Over to you. Good luck. Yeah, I'm known for making statements. Sometimes I'm wrong, sometimes I'm right. My today's statement is modular is superior. I have been inviting myself here earlier than asked for, and then I found out that my Mac doesn't run Zoom and my Windows machine doesn't run Macs, but I could fix that. And we will hopefully see some patches today. I have been told by Hackspace that the presentation should consist of at least 600 pages. I managed to do that. I, I will need about 75 to 30 hours. I hope you have time tomorrow. As everyone knows, I'm a bit shy, so I will hide behind a piece of Adobe paper now. And um, let's find the right button. This one. Okay, we, we can see your screen share. Oh, this picture should not be there, but I just had no other place to put it. Um, I start with a little bit about me because not everyone knows that. This is not good. Now it works. Um, <clears throat> I have been starting with Max in uh, 2001, and I made a lot of uh, plug plugins and um, custom obstructions for them. And I have been dealing with making VST hosts and sequencer and synthesizer patches. And some years later, I came back to Max making what I'm calling a modular sequencer, something which today is not so unique anymore. And um, I started making two versions of it, one consisting of regular abstractions, max patches, and one um, with B patches, um, so that you have actually an interface. And there are mainly modules for uh, data that deal with all kinds of data, numbers, banks, and um, I made a few with audio. And then there are some video modules, which um, you basically build a video synthesizer in, and then um, later you can sequence or modulate them from the sequencer modules. And there's a newer series of um, modules for audio, which are running a 10-channel, um, multi-channel version for, for audio format, which I uh, built myself. And um, I'm also controlling with this sequencer, of course, other things um, running in Max, like VST uh, hosts or VST plugins. 
and um, I have a I have a bunch of um, BST hosts with, with special features, for example, running more voices than uh, possible. Um, I was using something like um, MPE modes uh, before MPE exists and things like that. This is what you were coming for. Back to our question, um, what is modular? Modular is um, a form of architecture. It means dividing up a whole into parts. Um, and you can do that on different levels. You can do it while developing and building something, or you can just um, have something in a form and uh, actually use it um, in parts, or you can do both. Monolithic stru structure, if you have something in a whole, means that something has been built. You don't know exactly how. And if you are lucky, there is eventually one red button, which allows the user um, to turn a machine on or off. And then what is very common in the industry, in products made by human, is that something is built from modules, but it's still put in a fixed set. This is like many machines work. This is also like software usually works. Um, the connections between the modules are made by the one who built it, and you still only have um, left one button. And then we have module systems like, for example, data flow programming languages like Max, or children toys are, are often modular. And here it is the user who makes the connections. And then there is unfortunately another form of architecture, and this is called the traditional Max patch. And um, this unfortunately mostly looks like that. I'm pretty sure that K Kandinsky would have liked that, but it's not, it's, it's a long way. No? So, but back to topic. Um, now we know why modular is superior. Um, if you have a monolithic something, you can only use it as is. If you have a modular tool, you can do two different things with it. You can build something which is a fixed set, like using your modular synthesizer, build something for a setup and then keep it as you patched it for the next 10 years. But you can also build modular tools with modular tools. You can do both with it. You cannot do this with the integrated system. And this is why modular is superior. Now to my work in Max, um, which I built at Christmas uh, 2006, um, during the first four weeks, I made most of these modules. Um, it has some requirements, which I was trying to follow. Um, it should be a generic sequencer, not only for music, but also for other things. Um, I wanted to build something with an interface. I wanted to make groups, so any any module should fit into one of these groups. Um, they should all have a similar structure, similar size, eventually sharing resources. I'm a big fan of avoiding dependencies when working with software, so I don't use third-party externals and things like that. Um, of course, when you create B patches, they should follow the right-to-left order so that the usual max patching paradigm is not broken, and you should use as simple as possible data types. I'm coming to that soon. Um, yeah, and back in days, back in the days, we did not have um, things like Puttle. You, know, you had to do any kind of automation and total recall yourself. Um, and I also managed to add that. The data types itself is um, 
mainly because I'm a musician, mainly in integer and float numbers, especially small integer numbers um, and small integer intervals and relations is mostly what musical structures are made of. So this is our main format. I'm working with single numbers instead of traditional MIDI information or something, simply because they are easier to handle while programming and patching. But there are other things like Jitter or MIDI too, of course. The classes I've made are, you will have, you will need some objects for system like audio DSP, um, and a few global things like global start and stop. And then you break up the traditional sequence, sequencer system into clock counter sequencer, into things which deal with note and harmonic in a traditional way. Traditional means that you, that we are dealing with, um, with chromatic and diatonic systems here or use numbers as placeholders and we can still change them later. And um, then I'm a big fan of making gates and um, generators for, um, for modulation um, in and out, and then building MIDI by adding velocity and duration um, and things like that. So it's a bunch of groups. Oh, I just noticed the other 600 pages are empty. That's great. So we start. We start with the next. Can you see this? We can see that. Fantastic. Also, want to hear it eventually. Most of you will know the original and how it is made. It's a pretty simple structure already in the original. Uh, using math, it will look like that. Have actually failed to follow the to follow the time. And yes, it's only four bars instead of eight. So I can stop here. You can go a bit longer if you like, Roman. It's fascinating. I love to see actually what you've created. The, the right thing was incredible. Please um, show us some more. What do we have here? So I'm sorry, it's violet again. Everything is violet here. This is one of my favorite counter modules for, for bigger patches. Sure. I need to open another patch. 
required preferences. The chain counter is a counter which, um, if you set it to five, it will count to six and uses the sixth um, number as. How is that called when you. There's, um, there's a sports where you. It's very polyrhythmic. Well, or more than that, yeah. You should see that when you do it on, on 100 channels at once. <laughs> now let's have a look at the gate group. Um, I'm a big fan of gates. Some of them are pretty simple, but you can make them as complex as you want, as long as you don't leave the idea of making modules, which sometimes is a bit difficult. And split, split any incoming data based on its running number. Group split does this for both sides. Five times here, five times there. Probability probably probably doesn't do the explanation. Time maybe also not. Data morph doesn't do much at the moment. Um, it morphs the incoming data. This is basically um, a switch object, but um, with probability. And the probability is um, found new by, um, by both inlets. So you cannot, you cannot use the switch object. You have to do it on your own. And we have one who does this for four. We have a question from Darwin in the chat. He's asking, Roman, where can we find this work? Is it, has it been shared? Have you made this available for people? It has been shared back in the days with exactly seven people. Um, one of them is myself and another one passed away. Um, and um, I'm continuously updating that and I haven't found a form how to release it or, or a reason how to release it. I think there's lots, lots of people here that would love to have it. <laughs> yeah. I thought I would be faster. It's, it's okay in your own time. It's all good. Um, two gate. It's a simple gate. No, a gate two. We all know what it does. Um, the X gate has both paths open. It has two paths and you can switch them and then they are exchanged with each other. And you have one route blocked and one route open. I don't know why these graphics don't work. Say thanks to Windows. The procrastinator is, um, Basically, uh, a shift register with only the last in the, the last output opened. There's a classic shift register. I hope you can see that. Then you can distribute messages by based on random on multiple channels. Decoder. Guess what is inside. Very simple module. Um, 
That's amazing. Can we have a look inside one of the, I guess they're bee patches. I'm just quite interested to maybe see how you've yeah. created these in Max as just a simple example. I have one somewhere. Um, why not this one? Um, open original. They put it in a sub menu. Uh, I have to send it again, right? Yeah, I don't think we can see that. When you screen share in Zoom, it might be better to choose desktop because then whatever window you've got at the front is the one that's shared. I think you might be selecting specific windows in your share menu. Well, that's an amazing city. You built an entire ecosystem, haven't you, really? Wow. It used to be up to 400 modules, um, but I deleted some of them. Sometimes they get too big and then it's no longer a module and get sorted out. There are also some in the collection which are still not finished and only half working and only I know how it works. No? Um, oh, I've lost my Zoom window. Sorry, guys. It's okay. So, uh, there you go. Sure. Nothing special. It's always the same organization. Um, I've started using this kind of design um, since I started with Plugo. I always have the initialization on top, then comes stuff which is required for the interface. And um, here's the presets and um, Here's the DSP or logic or whatever. I patch from top to bottom. And mostly use my own obstructions. The shift register is this one. Today you would do that differently, I think. No, you can't see the sub patch. <laughs> Four hundred modules. That's quite impressive. That's a long development cycle, isn't it? Can you actually remember all of them? <laughs> I'd probably forget them if I made some of them in two thousand. I'd probably forget half of the ones I made. You know, that is that is very different uh, with with normal abstractions. If you have two thousand to remember your own shit. Now, if you don't make help files for your own work. You are, you are lost. You come back 10 years later and you don't know what it is doing and why. And That's some good practice advice there, isn't it? Comments and help files, yeah. So these two guys are at the border of how a module for a musical modular system should look like. Um, Tessiture is a gate um, and it takes incoming uh, numbers or MIDI notes if you want to think of them like MIDI notes. And you can split it up for, for, the, classic, um, for the classic voices um, across the range and then decide um, to which, um, if, if something comes in into the tenor inlet, but it's too high pitched, it's outside the range, um, then you have to, uh, to decide if you want to have it fold down using modulo if, or if you want to send it, um, to, to another channel, um, which allows to keep this pitch. And you basically only need something like that um, if you build um, if you build a formant synthesizer, which is using um, these voices and these frequencies. Yeah. Um, our rotate gate is a gate with 16 inputs and 16 inlets, and um, you can you can move them around and go one step. I could watch that for hours, what it is doing, but um, you don't really want to use that for making music. It's, it's too complex. You don't need that. No, maybe maybe with, with three or four, you can use that, but not the 16. <laughs> so, 
Sur. Simple pattern sequencer. This is also from the first generation help files to demonstrate the pattern object. The pattern object stores presets from uh, any other objects. And then you can send them in again 